Hello, fellow engineers, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 2. Now, airplanes are pretty standard looking these days. Whether it's airliners or combat jets, there does seem to be a standard design. But that wasn't always the case. And today, we'll be looking at some of the weirdest aircraft ever built and recreating them in Kerbal Space Program 2 to see how they fly. But first, a word from the people who made this weird flying machine. This video is sponsored by Star Trek Fleet Command, a free-to-play open-world strategy MMO that will not only put your skills and strategies to the test, but will deliver you an amazing experience which allows you to boldly go where no man has gone before, all from the palm of your hand. If you boost my link in the description, you can download through the Amazon App Store, then you can save 20% on Star Trek Fleet Commander in-game app purchases and use Amazon coins to push your savings even further in both this game and other games on there. Anyway, my favourite thing about Star Trek Fleet Command is gaining new blueprints to iconic Star Trek ships and then upgrading them like adding more powerful weapons or a stronger shield. You're then ready to join friends in an alliance to take on the toughest of missions. I also like that as the commander of a starbase on the edge of civilized space, you can recruit iconic officers like James T. Kirk and of course Spock. Of course, you wouldn't be able to see that much detail if it wasn't for the frankly ridiculous graphics. It's easy to forget that this is just a mobile game. So, boost the link in my description and join millions of players and download Star Trek Fleet Command. And make sure you have Amazon App Store downloaded first if you want to save a bit more cash. Anyway, back to today's video. So, let's head into single player. We'll start a new campaign called Matt's Planes Were Fine. Of course, we're not the Kerbal Space Agency. We are the UK Space Agency, everyone's favorite space agency. All right, and then we're in the VAB, ready to create our first aircraft. And we're going to be trying to recreate this, the Kyushu J7W Jinden, which apparently translates to Magnificent Lightning. Uh, it was an experimental Japanese World War II fighter uh, and kind of unusual looking. So, I reckon to make this, we probably want want that cockpit in what ways always the chair face okay so this is the front so i think we've got a bit of a nose cone like that and why why doesn't that paint job line up that's really that's actually bugging me quite a lot i'm gonna have to yeah that'll do that'll do yeah i think out the front we have a little air intake so like that oh look at that actually looks decent we've then got some control surfaces so let's wang them there but of course they need to be much much smaller so we'll make the span smaller we'll definitely make the length smaller so that looks pretty spot on i've noticed underneath we've got this like well sort of strutty thing so you know i love strutting i mean an i-beam seems quite excessive is there not like something a bit smaller <laughs> Guess not, but I can at least move these to make them a little bit smaller. So we'll rotate you like that, move you up, and then cue that sexy music because we are strutting our stuff. Oh, yeah. Okay, that was it. That was that was the strutting done. Uh, presumably, that's just to like give it a bit more strength so it doesn't bend because I assume this is going to go pretty fast, this thing. Anyway, next we need some fuel. So I think we'll go with a methane fuel tank because we're probably going to have a jet engine. This thing did actually have a propeller on the back, but sadly, the game doesn't have propellers. Uh, it's also got a fair amount of air intakes. So we'll shove two there and then one on the top as well. And we'll wang a jet engine at the back and we'll shove these wings on. So these need to go down a bit. So they look a bit like that, but I think these control surfaces are way too long because we've got these sort of tail fins in between them. So control surface span needs to be a lot less and then position, I guess shove them on the end of the plane wing like that. So then we can put our tail fins there. Perfect, right. So now stabilizers, if I shove them on the ends of the wings, can I then move them to where I want them? Yeah, there we go, there we go, do that. So I think that's, sort of the plane done. We just need to add some wheels and then we're good to go. So we got little wheels under there. I don't actually know where the front wheel is. I guess, I guess we can just have one at the front. Okay, quickly name this the Kyushu. And then let's launch. So here it is. It hasn't blown up yet. So that is good. You're right in there, Bill. Nice. Okay, let's go. So it has plenty of fuel. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know what's happening with the wheels. Okay, let's try that again quickly. Again, pretty sure that SAS is my weakness. So I have turned that off, at least for takeoff. Man, those wheels. What is going on? Okay, final attempt. I feel like having wheels at the bottom of wingtips is probably not the best idea. Maybe that's why this thing failed. It's just not going to happen. So I guess that's why planes don't look like this. Let's move on to the next one. Right, so this next one is a biplane, which means it's got two wings. It's called the Belfogor. The Belfogor. And it was one of the only jet-powered biplanes 
airplanes ever built. Let's find out why no more exist. So we got a cockpit, we've got a bit of fuel, but on top of that, that's where our jet engine sits. So I could either shove a jet engine on top, but <laughs> it's huge. So we're going to have to go with one of these smaller ones, which I don't... Yeah, we can't attach that on its own. It can only go on the back of something. So what I'm going to do, we're going to add a very, very small fuel tank on the top with an air intake on the front and then that on the back. So we have our jet engine. So behind this, we just need some sort of cone. I think I'll just use a nose cone, but put it backwards. And then we just got to try and add the wings to this thing. So as it's a biplane, we're going to need two sets. So we'll go with those. And these are sort of angled forwards a bit. So I guess we'll, we'll do that. We'll move them down to the right spot then we'll copy the second wing up and that's going on the engine remember but again it sort of sits above it so let's move it above we'll touch our tips or our bases in that case this top wing is a bit longer than the bottom so let's do that we then need the tail and that sort of comes off not in the middle but around the sides so if i do that in fuel tanks like that then got a wing there so i can just copy that to the other side perfect sort of this looks very dodgy <laughs> Yeah, let's nose cone those up. That makes sense to me. Probably do the same out the back. And again, lots of upside down tail fins on these. So I guess that used to be the way. This is the way. Making that sort of shape. That doesn't seem to be a thing any anymore at all. But uh, yeah. Anyway, finally, we just need some wheels. Yeah, if I can just about get that center of mass in the middle, then it shouldn't lean back. <laughs> <laughs> Those wheels are so close together. This is going to end in tears. But still, that's sort of what we're aiming for. We just need a bit of strutage. So we'll go from there down to there. From up there down to there. So let's see. Why do jet-powered biplanes not exist anymore? Okay, it hasn't exploded. It hasn't fallen over. The, the wheels are doing fine. So let's fire the engine up. Oh my goodness, this is actually, this is actually looking... Okay, I'm not going to say good. I'm just going to say okay. But if we pull back when we get to about 100 meters a second, then yes, we're up. We are up. Okay, G, put the... Put the oh, no, no, don't put the... Oh, I thought I was up. I wasn't up. I just bounced. <laughs> I put the wheels away slightly too early there. Okay, this time I think we're actually up. You may have noticed we lost one of our landing gear. That did explode on takeoff. Uh, also struggling to pull up, actually. I guess because there's so much wing going on. This thing actually weighs a ton. Oh, no, hang on. There's a, there's a building coming towards me. Hang on, how do I how do I turn? We've got we to turn. I'm trying to turn. Come on. Oh, no. We're losing so much speed. We're losing altitude. Right, put the wheels back down. Put the wheels back down quick. What did we learn? I mean, perhaps we learned that biplanes aren't twice as good just because they have twice as many wings. All right, so we'll delete that out of existence because we are on to the next vehicle, the Le Duc. That's not French duck, although this was actually a French craft, so maybe it was. So for this one, I think we need an inline cockpit. And basically, this plane was just like well, one of these ones with like a huge nose cone intake thing. So again, very small wing angle. These all seem to have like straight wings rather than pointy back ones. Now we've then got these little fuel tanks on the end and this is where the wheels go as well. So I will just nose cone them up and then shove the wheels on. For some reason, everything seems to be a bit wonky on this build. Like the wheels are like that. But in the photo, that is actually the angle of the wheels, I think. So that's fine. We've got a little wheel at the back. Again, that just wants to snap in the most random orientation ever. Whatever. I'm sure that's fine. So this had a jet capable of 64 kilonewtons of thrust. Well, this one is 85. So I guess that's the closest. So we'll shove that on the back. This one is a bit more similar to what we're used to in terms of control surfaces there. A single tail fin that wants to snap at the most random angle possible. What is going on? <laughs> so yeah, I won't leave that at that angle. I will rotate it myself manually because the game won't do it for me. Cheers, game. Not sure if it's perfectly straight, but I'm sure that will do. Right, and then let's get the French duck into the sky to the runway. <laughs> so sort of drifting, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Let's try and straighten up and then say, oh my god, oh my goodness, it's straight up. It's straight up. No. <laughs> I mean, technically, my most successful flight so far. <laughs> Uh, perhaps we should try that again with SAS on. Yeah, so, so much lift out the front. That's because the wings are right at the front. I mean, technically, the real craft wasn't like that because this point was a lot longer. So I guess if I remove that, swap it with another fuel tank and then shove it on, I guess that's a bit more true to the real life layout. Center of mass right in the middle now. So we will have to move our wheels forwards a little bit. That should be fine. All right, this thing is going up like straight up. 
I'm not sure if it's meant to work like that. I think we're meant to go along the runway a bit first. Anyway, we'll pop the landing gear away and then see if this thing can actually fly any better. Look how wonky that wheel is at the back. Anyway, you know what? This is sort of flying okay. So since this is the only one that has flown, the real one went 0.87 Mach, uh, which is 298 meters a second. Ours is up to, ooh, 260. 70? Tell you what, if this can go 298. Yes, it has 300 meters a second. Okay, so this is the most accurate aircraft I've ever built in this game. Let's celebrate by doing spins. Isn't that nice, Bill? Yeah, I thought so. So yeah, maybe the French were onto something because I guess this looks pretty similar to a real plane, actually. And that's probably why it flies so well. Anyway, Bill is loving life, but that is the end of the duck. So let's just send him straight down into the sea where a duck belongs, I think. Right, so this next craft is probably the weirdest one of them all. It's actually an airliner and it's called the Ring Wing. I mean, look at this thing. It's like... <laughs> it's like the game's broken or something, but we're going to do our best to try and build it in Kerbal Space Program. So I guess to start with, we'll go with a shuttle cockpit, as that's the most sort of airlinery one. We'll then do a large fuel tank, but I'll probably empty this with fuel because I don't think we're going to get too much lift. And then we got that at the back. Uh, I'll tell you what, actually, I might make this longer and put a cargo, you yeah, know, we'll put a cargo bay like that. So it's quite long, but the weight is at the front. I think that's going to be important, but if I need to move the weight about, I can replace this cargo bay with a fuel tank and just change how much fuel is in it. But yeah, for now, I think that's pretty good. Got a little nose cone at the front, front landing gear, and then I think we're pretty much good to try and do the wing. So how... <laughs> How is this even going to work? I have no idea. I mean, first off, we want a wing sort of in the middle. And then we're going to have to tweak this to hell. So it's got to be a very small span. The root length, I think we'll do 0 0.3, which means the tip length has to be the same. 0.3. Although actually, look, that does that does get smaller, right? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Okay, that's fine. Okay, we'll make it the same thickness as well. So 0.4. So we've ended up with that. Let's see now. Can I copy this and shove another one? Yes, I can. Although it's gone. Why have you gone upside down? Well, anyway, I can probably rotate that. Yeah, okay, okay. This is going to work. I think this is actually going to work. So we just keep copying and then <laughs> keep rotating. I think I did going to do two clicks. So one, two, every single time. That should make a nice circle, I think. Okay, it's not going to light. Probably one of the most ambitious looking things I've ever made. We are pretty much there, though. I'm just wondering what I need to do in the middle to make this work. I think it's probably worth shrinking these a bit. So we'll make the wingspan 0. Yeah, 0. 0.2. So they fit together perfectly. <laughs> Look at this thing. Oh, please work. I really, really want this to work. Um, I'm likely going to have to strut those two together, though, because they're not actually going to fit as they are. Uh, the other thing I need to do is the tail fin. So for that, we need a stabilizer. And basically, it goes from the sort of back of the craft about, about there. But then the span has to go high enough to do that. It angles forwards to go over there. And yes, yeah, sort of looks like that. <laughs> oh, this looks incredible. Uh, next up, we need some big old wheels. So we'll shove them like that. That should be good. I might actually add a bit of a, a bit of a safety wheel at the back just so we don't accidentally scrape our bum on the floor. There we go. Now then finally, we need some thrust. So if this one, two jet engines, they're sort of set like in there like that. <laughs> Oh, look at this thing. Right, so this is the ring wing. I have no idea how it's going to work. I'm probably going to have to, like, change the flaps and stuff so they don't all go. But uh, before this thing blows up, let's just double check the center of mass. That's there. Center of lift. Ooh, all the way up there. You know, wheels are just behind the mass, so it should be fine. I, I'm sure some of you are smart enough to know how this is going to go before I hit launch, but I'm, I'm a trial and error sort of guy. So we're on the runway. Oh, it fell backwards. It fell backwards. Uh, what I wanted to check, though, if I were to pull up... Okay, I tell you what, actually, the wings, they sort of... They know, like, what orientation they are. So it does sort of work. The ones on top... Actually, I feel like they're all going the opposite direction, apart from the ones on top. So we basically got to go around these and invert controls for most of them. I mean, to be honest, these edge ones, I probably, I probably don't want to control surface at all. So we'll turn those off on that one, on that one, and on that one. Uh, to move the sensor of mass forward, I am just adding a bit more fuel to that front fuel tank as well. So we're up to... We'll try 10 tons of fuel and I will move the the wheels back as well just to doubly make sure we're good. All right, so now we are much more settled. Let's turn SAS off and just check our... Yeah, okay, they look good. They actually look decent. So 
Let's fire up the jet engines and see if this thing takes off. <laughs> Look at it. It's insane. I'm a bit worried how bouncy. Oh, I didn't do the I didn't do the friction thing on the front wheel. Oh well, I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure it'll be fine. Let's just try and get some speed. Oh no, I've inverted the I inverted the steering. Alright, pull up, pull up. Yeah. Oh my goodness, it's flying. It's actually flying. No way. <laughs> Look at this thing. It's incredible. What? Why don't these exist? These are amazing. Oh, hang on. Hang on. We're rolling. How do I stop rolling? Oh, I see. Uh, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Struggle. Pull up. Pull up. Pull up. Pull up. Okay, we're good. We're good. Never in doubt. Never in doubt. <laughs> I can't believe this thing actually flies. This might be the best plane I've made today. Yeah, I will say it's sort of tricky to get any sort of altitude in this thing. I'm trying to pull up. Uh, really not. It's not keen on that. But at this altitude, I mean, look how cool it looks. Not that's all about looks. It's, it's about engineering, remember? I, I'm not being an architect. So that's how long it took me to turn around taking off from the runway, which is all the way over there. Ah, it's really bright. I can't see anything. Sort of unusual steering. If you try and steer left or right, it just corkscrews. Oh, now we might be in trouble. Now we are literally in trouble. Oh, poo. Oh, I wanted to land this thing. But yeah, honestly, the ring wing, they should bring it back. I want to see this in production. And to be fair, I think they were actually planning to. I think Lockheed made this or at least thought about making it. Um, I'm guessing theirs didn't have inverted controls. Oh, and probably, probably didn't do that as often. Or maybe it did. Maybe that's why they never made them. But yeah, I am absolutely in love with this design. It's so cool. I can't believe it actually works in this game as well. Like, yes, we are taking off. Get those landing gear away. Look at it. <laughs> oh, it's so cool. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Remember, check out Star Trek Fleet Command using the link in my description. Thanks once again to them for sponsoring. But uh, I'm going to spend the rest of my day flying this around. That is for sure. So I'll say peace, love, and ring wings. Bye, guys.